Hello, good day everyone. Today we will have our discussion or continuation of our discussion as to the different kinds of obligation. So we have known already the different kinds of obligation. There are primary classifications at the same time. There are just um, secondary na classifications po ng atin pong mga obligations. So one of the primary classifications of obligations are pure and conditional obligation. So, madali lang to, ano. And other thing is that, why, why is it very important that we have to understand the different kinds of um, obligations? So, basically, the importance of which is that nagkakaiba-iba yung liabilities sa different kinds of obligations at the same time, compliance and remedies of parties. So, it's very important to know. And here, like for pure and conditional obligations, it has something to do with the demandability of the obligation. Tama ba? So, if we had to read exactly what is under the provisions of 1179, According to 1179, as to pure, section 1 of which is pure and conditional obligations. So, 79 says, 1179 says, Every obligation whose performance does not depend upon a future or uncertain event or upon a past event unknown to the parties is demandable at once. He And... Every obligation which contains a resolutory condition shall also be demandable without prejudice to the effects of the happening of the event. What's very noticeable on this part is, sinasabi dyan, demandable at once daw kapag ang obligation ay hindi nag-depend upon a future and certain event. At kapag daw ang obligation ay nagko-contain ng resolutory condition, ay demandable din. So, by this provision, we could readily see na yung obligation ay immediately demandable if it is not depending upon a future and certain event and then it depends upon, if it contains a resolutory na condition. So, yun po yung ating makukuhang ano, laman ng provision ng 1179. Ano. But basically, under paragraph 1 of 1179, it tells us actually the definition of what is a pure obligation. Ano ba yung pure obligation? Isa siyang obligation that does not contain any condition or no specific date or period or term. Ano? It is not subject to any condition and no specific date being mentioned para po sa fulfillment ng obligation. So, in those cases, um, it could be demandable immediately. Tama ba? So, as an example, although we have here as an example in your book already, pero simplest way of saying, uh, a, sim a very simple example is like saying na, I promise to give you my car. So, napakadali lang ano. So, o di kayaman ay sasabihin ko, I oblige myself to give you 10,000 upon your demand. Yun yung mga pure obligation. Wala po siyang mga condition. Wala din po siyang sineset na date, any uncertain or past event unknown. So, yun po yung ating sinasabing um, pure obligation under paragraph 1 of 1179. Let's look at 1179 paragraph 2. Ang paragraph 2, sinasabi din dyan ay ang um, isang obligation na nagko-contain ng resolutory condition. But before that, since we have made a definition already of what is a pure obligation, let's touch na naman conditional obligations. Ano? What is now a conditional obligation? A conditional obligation is one with a condition imposed upon the performance. So, ano ba yung condition? Ang condition daw is a future and uncertain event. And the happening of which causes ha causes. It's either pwedeng magiging effective 
ang isang obligation o di kaya mai-extinct or mai-extinguish ang isang obligations or rights which had sub uh, which had subject to it depends so therefore pala ang condition as a requirement it should be something future and uncertain past but unknown and must not be possible or simplest way of saying it it should be possible so yun po yung ating requirement po ng uh, ika ngay condition must be possible when it comes to performance so future uncertain it means to say kapag ang event naman eh, hindi certain or not uncertain ano not uncertain and will necessarily happen it cannot be treated as a condition so under this um under the concept na dapat ang condition ay future tsaka uncertain pero pwede natin siya later on we will be discussing pwede natin siya i-consider as an obligation with a period or with a term ano po it should be that the condition should refer to a past past but unknown na event ano to the party so it refers as well could be to a future event that a um that the that the occurrence must be as well uncertain take note ha so eto po yung ating mga requirements if we have um if we have to conclude under this provision as well it also tells us the obligations that are demandable at once those which is pure under the first paragraph and second paragraph those obligations that contains a resolutory po na condition or resolutory mana period so take note of that ano and let's now touch to the principal kinds of condition what are the principal kinds of condition What are the principal kinds of conditions? So, you know this one, I believe you have touched upon with this one already. We have suspensive condition and a resolutory condition. So, madali lang po itong um, i-recall ang suspensive at saka resolutory. Kapag po suspensive, tatandaan lang natin na lagi po yung nakakasuspend ng effectivity or demandability ng obligation hanggat hindi pa po nagha-happen yung condition. So, it could either be a condition precedent or a condition antecedent. Ano? Condition precedent or a condition na um tawag nito um, antecedent. When we say when we say suspensive condition when we say suspensive condition, basically, it will give rise to an obligation or rights. So, kapag po ang condition ay naghahapen, it means to say that ang nangyayari po ay maa-acquire po natin ang mga rights under the obligation. So, the demandability of the obligation lang is suspended until the happening of a future an uncertain event which constitutes the condition. So, meaning, kapag po ang condition ay hindi po nagtitake place, ang parties ay would stand as if the condition have never existed. So, in other words of saying it, if no fulfillment of the condition, it is no obligation. Ano? So, ano bang mga example nito? Although we have stated here an example, I will give you a simple example ng ganito. I'll give you 1 million if you will marry Gerald Anderson. So, napakadili lang. Ano? So, ang condition ay suspended muna yung suspended muna yung obligation. Hindi mo na kita bibigyan ng 1 million hanggat po hindi ka po suspended muna ang demandability hanggat hindi mo napapangasawa si Gerald Anderson. So, yun po yung ating example ng suspensive na condition. Let's go for resolutory condition or a condition subsequent. Ano? 
a condition subsequent. Ang kaibahan naman sa suspensive condition as against with the resolutory, ito automatic na demandable ang iyong mga um, tawag na ito, automatic na po pwede kang mag-demand for the fulfillment ng obligation. Ano? Na kung saan man, kapag po nag po yung atin pong sinasabing condition, ay na-extinguish naman yung obligation. So, ibig sabihin nito, the right already exists. Kaso nga lang ay posible siya na mag-determinate upon the happening of the event. So, let's say for example, I will give you my car until na mapapangasawa mo si Gerald Anderson. So, let's say for example, si Gerald Anderson na untog at ikaw nga ay inasawa. Ay, di yan nangyayari. Ay. But, from the time that I have I have said um, I have had the obligation na to give you my car automatic from there ay po pwede mong kuhanin na sa akin ng car at posible kapag uh, you would marry na nga Gerald Anderson ay di po na terminate na po yung aking obligation you have automatically already have the right to demand for the delivery of the car and use it ano but however then if you would marry Gerald then you would lose the right to use my car because the condition is already fulfilled so we have here another example and now we have here oh this one I have mentioned this one already under 1179 when could be the obligation is demandable at once so demandable at once kung ikaw ay creditor pwede mo na siyang similin pwede mo na siyang i-demand so, kapag pure under first paragraph and then subject to a resolutory condition and then subject then to a resolutory period under 1193 of which we will be discussing further. I know we will be discuss discussing further. And hope that concludes for 1179. Um, we have naman defined that what is a condition. So, I think that concludes 1179. And let's continue on 1180.